Hey guys, Anala's here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you how you can play Shadowbane in 2017 for free. That's right. You can play one of the best PvP MMORPG games ever made for completely free in 2017. In this video, I'm going to go over how to get the client for the game. How to set up your account for the game. How to make a character. I'm going to give a couple examples of characters that you could make. I'm going to go over how you can set up your interface. I'm going to go over how you can get your levels in the game and an early starting guide. All right, so let's go ahead and do that, shall we? But before we do, I'm going to put a lot of information in the description of this video so you can find out where to get information on the game and some other beginner guides as well. So check that out. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at Anali for the win. I will answer them as, much, as well as I can. All right. So first step is obviously acquiring the game and setting up your account so you're able to play. You're going to head over to magicbane.com. That's magicbane.com to do this. So you're going to go there. On the first page, it's going to show you how to download the game. It's going to give you a link to a torrent of the client. So you're going to go ahead on and click on that and download the torrent for the Shadowbane, Shadowbane client. After you do that, you're going to have to use a torrent program like uTorrent to download the game. If you don't know how to do that, there's a lot of easy guides on the internet showing you how to do such things. I recommend uTorrent. That's what I've always used, and it seems to work great. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and download the client, and then you're going to want to have something like 7-Zip or... WinRAR, I recommend 7-Zip to extract the file into a folder. And then you have your Shadowbane client. It should be already set up for you to play. All right. Uh, in the Shadowbane client folder, you will see a SP config set up as well. And in there, you can set up your resolution and your graphics and such. It should be set to 1920 by 1080 already, so you should be good to go with that. All right, so then at that point, you should have a Shadowbane folder ready to go. Next, you're going to head over and create an account on the magicbane.com forums. Set up your username, your email address, you know, make your password, standard stuff, okay? Um... Now, you can make as many accounts as you want using your email. So, you could have you could have 15 different accounts if you want to under as long as you're it's all under one email address, all right? And in the game, multiboxing is a pretty accepted thing. I usually don't run like to run over 4 because it just kind of gets crazy after that. But uh yeah, you can set up your your configuration file for Shadowbane with spconfig.exe, uh, depending on what size monitor you have and such. And then launch up the game and you're good to go. Log in. All right. So on to the next step. All right, so here we are creating our first character. Now, what is a good character to make first? Well, in the world of Shadowbane, a great character to make first would be a character that can kill a lot of mobs at the same time. Because then you're going to be able to farm loot, uh, farm experience for all characters in your guild, etc. So here, I'm going to go with a very basic human druid, okay? Now, creating characters in Shadowbane is very subjective, and everybody has their own perspective, but I'm going to go very simple here for new players. So that's why I'm going with the Human Druid. Alright? So first thing you want to do is select female or male. Some classes can only be female uh, or male, so do that first or it'll reset your stats later on. 
All right, so I'm going with human, right? And then to be a druid or to be a healer class, you must pick the healer base class, okay? So we're going to go with the healer base class there, all right? And we're moving on to traits. In Shadowbane, we've got a very complex little system here going on with character creation. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm taking five points out of every skill that I'm not going to be using a trait for or need requirements for at the beginning of the game. All right. So I take out the five out of the ones that you see there. And then I'm going to want to boost my intelligence. All right. So I'm taking Wizard's Apprentice to start off to boost my my maximum intelligence. All right. Human has has very mediocre base stats so you're going to want to manipulate those so you can hit things better and harder all right so we go with wizard's apprentice next i'm going to move on to the human uh human rune intelligence rune boost my intelligence again by 10 okay then i'm going to take brilliant mind to boost it even further all right this is going to leave me with 130 base intelligence to start base max intelligence to start the game all right now from there you can do a lot of different things but like i said this is a very basic character creation guide all right sometimes tough as nails is a skill that you want to get in there if you can a lot of the times of course depending on the character right tough as nails will give you a higher base constitution for other classes than fighter because it's uh, the constitution gains aren't as good. All right, so we go with Born of the Renew, Brilliant Mind, Wizard's Apprentice. So I have 130 max intelligence to start off the game. All right. Now, as you can see here, I've changed my mind. Okay. I wanted to get that tough as nails in there instead of having wizard's apprentice because wizard's apprentice takes five away from your constitution all right so i took out wizard's apprentice put in brilliant mind born of the ridnu and now i'm upping my constitution so i can take tough as nails to get a higher base hp pool okay so born of the ridnu really had mind tough as nails that's this druid spec. It's very basic. Like I said, everybody has a different perspective on what you want to make for a character. That's what I went with on this one. Because it's for new players. Alright. Then you go down, do you know you can manipulate you can manipulate your the way your character looks and what you want what weapon you want to start with. Okay. Unfortunately you can't have a beard on a chick. I mean that would be awesome. Right? Maybe we'll get a little action. Maybe we'll get some of that later on in the game if we can get them to change it. All right. So that's that's how you create your character. Then you're going to finish the character, name your character, and then select a server. There's only going to be one server right now. So that's what you're going to go with. Okay. All right. Next thing we're going to go over is setting up your interface so it's a lot better than the stock interface. Uh, as you can see, when you load it to the game with your resolution, it's going to be all messed up. You're going to have the big clunky uh, health and mana uh, aspects on the left and right. You're going to have a bunch of stuff that you don't want there. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go through. Well, first we're going to we're going to moo. Oh, he he won't moo. All right, we'll moon you. There we go. Okay. So, then you're going to go ahead and close those side, those bottom right side and left side um, interface aspects there. Boom. And boom there. Okay, close that thing right there. Um, next, we're going to go with... Moving your chat boxes and your combat boxes to a decent place. I like to put mine on the left and right below my character. Resize the windows so they're the exact same, the exact same size. 
Okay, there we go. There we go. Next, I'm going to take the hot bar and manipulate that. And then put it down the bottom. Okay. Take your selection window, line it up down there as well, so you can see your target's hit points very easily compared to your hit points. I like to move my map down there as well. So it's all in one little place. Makes it a lot cleaner. A lot of people have their different ways that they like to set up their interface. Uh, this is just a quick, a quick way to do it for new players. All right, so next I'm going to take my open up the the windows portion of the of the menu and open character info powers small. That's going to give you a small window with all of your current powers in it. Okay, and then I like to take those powers and drag them off onto my screen like this, like so. Okay, you can just do it by dragging them. And then to move them on the screen while they're there, you just hold uh, shift or control. For some reason, I can't remember right now. It's either shift. Oh, okay. I think it's sh okay. It's shift to move them once they're on your screen. And then go into your preferences and make them snap to the grid so you can manipulate them and make them nice and clean. You'll be able to see now it snaps to the grid. It lines everything up nice and evenly. All right, now we want to use our status bar, which is in Windows. Pop down the status bar. It's a much better way of looking at your health, your mana, your stamina, and your current experience than those huge sidebars. All right, so now we have our basic interface set up, and we're a lot better off than we were when we started the game. We can get over here and start smacking on some monsters. Oh, and you can also, by control clicking on the skills, you can assign any key to the hotkey of it. It's a pretty nice little, pretty nice little ability, I think. I've always been a big fan of the Shadowbane interface system. You can also load a layout through the menu, like I just showed you there. Uh, and you'll be able to load your other characters' uh, interfaces so you don't have to redo this every single time that you make a character. And I'm going to start smacking on these on these spiders and snakes. All right, so now we get our interface set up. Next step. All right, the best way or not the best way, everybody has their own methods, but here's an easy way to get to one from one to level 33 and beyond. All right, so we're gonna, st we're gonna enter the game with our character. We're gonna start out in Hamlet of Homeland's Grove, okay? We're going to go there. We're going to run northeast to the spiders and snakes. Kill those. Make sure to make sure you remember to loot. Now, as you can see, when I select the mob using the apostrophe keys, uh, you'll see a color. All right. Uh, ideally, you want them to be blue. If they're red, that means they're going to be hard. If they're teal, they're giving you less XP, and if they're green, they're giving you even less XP. When they become white, you are not receiving any XP at all. Okay, so you're going to get to level 7, I think, at the spiders and the snakes. And then we're going to head over northeast to a group of lizard men and snakes. Okay, so you're going to come over here and get your level 8. Remember to keep an eye on your HP, loot the mobs, because you're going to need the gold, you're going to need the items to sell to make more gold. Alright, so we're going to hit level 8 here, and then what we're going to do is, we're going to head over to a town, a city called Knightsbridge nearby, to purchase a buff, a buff potion called a... Greater Concoction Potion. Okay. Uh, back in the day, you people would have multiple accounts to get all kinds of buffs on their characters. And at some point in the release of the game, they added the Greater Concoction Potion, making it so you can just use one potion to get 
most of the buffs in the game. They're not the best, but they're almost the best. So we're going to run up to Knight's Bridge. We're going to tab target through all of the NPCs here until we find the Alchemist. Okay? You use the apostrophe keys and the semicolon keys to tab through. You can change these in the hotkey settings, of course. We're going to find ourselves the Alchemist. All right. Then we're going to roll over to him. I guess I'm checking out the bar now. No, we're going to the Alchemist. Okay. So go to the Alchemist, pick up a greater concoction potion, um, depending on... What class you are, you might want to pick up a some identity and identify scrolls so you can identify magical items that you're going to use. And you might want to pick up some uh, stamina and health potions as well to make the process easier on yourself. Okay, no need to use those potions yet until we hit the monster camp. All right. Now, when you're on Newbie Island, when you die, you're not going to lose any of your loot. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. But when you get to the mainland, you will definitely want to bank your items. All right, so we're going to head back after, up to the our Rune Master buddy after we get our Concoction Potion and what else, whatever else you needed. Identify scrolls, health potions, stamina potions, recall scrolls so you can get back faster. And we're going to head back to Holland's Grove. And then when we get to Hellman's Grove, we're going to head out west. Okay. We're going to head out west and try to get to around level 14 if it's possible. Each zone in Shadowbane has multiple. It's called a... Uh, each zone is called a micro zone. And then you've got a macro zone. All right. So you're going to have multiple areas in each zone that have different mob camps with different levels of creatures in them all right so you're gonna have to uh do a little exploring if you want to check out the game right and I then once you get back to once you get back to the town make sure you sell all your loot that you don't want because you're gonna need as much gold as you can in this game all right for training for buying gear for upgrading cities etc Okay, so sell what you got. And always remember to use Travel Stance when you're traveling around the world. It's going to give you a speed boost, but it will also lower your attack and defense. So be aware of that. If somebody's around and is going to hit you, they're going to hit you, probably, with 50% less attack, well, 50% less defense. All right, so we're selling all our items here, all of our junk. And I went ahead and purchased some little newbie gear just so I can look better for the video. You know, I'm putting on my dress. Got to take my pants off first. There we go. And if you really want to be stylish, take off those boots and put them back on. There we go. Oh, yeah. Looking hot. All right. So we're going to pump back into travel stance and head, head west. To the Riverlands. Alright, once you get to the Riverlands and you find yourself a spawn with creatures in it, go ahead and use that concoction potion to make yourself a glorified badass. Mob should be pretty easy to handle when you have a greater concoction potion on. Back in the day, well, you didn't have this, and it made things a lot harder to level up. All right, and uh, in Shadowbane, when you sit down, you're going to regenerate your stats much faster. So if you need to regen some stats, pop some pots, sit down. Uh, but also be aware that if somebody hits you while you're sitting down, they are going to hit you a lot harder than if you're standing up. All right, so we found our little mob camp here looking for the blue mobs. We're going to hit those, try to get around 14 or so. Okay, and then we're going to, once we're 14, we're going to head to another zone here. And uh, once you hit level 10, you're going to have to promote 
to your prestige class. In this case, I am going to be a bard. Okay, so once you hit level 10, you're going to have to go back to town, hit the rune master, and you're going to want to go to uh, Car, is the city you want to teleport to so you can uh, promote to your prestige class. Okay, so for mages, you've got things like bards, wizards, etc. And for rogues, you've got thieves and scouts. And more. A lot of classes in this game. So once you teleport to teleport to Car. Okay, from your buddy the Rune Master. You're gonna tie up target through the NPCs once again to find the prestige class trainer that you want to be. Okay. So I'm a mage, I'm gonna be a bard. So I'm going to tab target through and find the bard trainer, run over to them, and train up my skills. My skills. You get good at the tab targeting after a while. Alright, there he is. Found him. You can see on the mini-map when you select a certain NPC, it will make, it will highlight the, um, the yellow marker on the minimap. So I'm gonna go over to the the bar trainer here. And mainly since I'm low level and well when you're leveling up your classes, right? Uh, especially on mages, your focus skill is very important. It's gonna be what your other spells are based off of damage wise and attack rating wise. So for Instance bards are going to use bard song for most of their skills. So what I do here is I level up my bard song and I level up my my bard skills. I don't have access to my nuke yet. So I'm just leveling up what I can and then I'm going to head back out and I'm going to head back down to Holmes Grove and we're going to go to the higher level zone. Alright, so once you've hit the promote button and you've become a bard, you can see I'm training here. Now be careful early on where you're training your skills because once you hit a certain threshold, you're, you will see that your skills become very, very expensive. So just level them up to a reasonable amount. You don't want to just blast all your gold you know, trying to get a skill up one or two times. So we're going to head back to our buddy, the Rune Master. Teleport back to Hoplin's Grove once again. All right. And then once you're at Hoplin's Grove, you're going to head out west, back to that same zone. Look around and kill blue mobs until you're around level 14, if you can. If you don't want to do that, you can definitely move to the higher level zone. But beware, um, red named mobs will hurt and you will most likely die. Alright, so once you get to around level 14, head back to Hamas Grove. Uh, feel free to take a free teleport by dying if you need to. Sell all your junk once again, and then we're going to be looking to move to the higher level zone so we can get up to level 33. All right. So as you can see here, um, to the northwest, there is the bog there that'll that'll say 10 to 20. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to teleport or repledge to Hamlet of Fort Troyden. Okay, head over to Fort Troyden, go northwest, and in that zone you'll see plenty of mobs that you can kill for experience. Um, I recommend, like I said, try to find the ones that are blue, unless you're a more experienced player. Right? Now, one thing to know about leveling up in this game is archers can be a real difficulty uh, especially if they're red 
So try to avoid archer camps unless you know what you're doing. Uh, as you can see here, I go to the first rat spawn in the zone. I'm leveling up, killing stuff. My greater concoction potion lets me take down red mobs fairly easily. Um, yeah, keep that, keep that rat's ass. Now, once you hit level 20, you're going to notice that your tags, your uh, guild tags, are going to disappear. All right. So at that point, if you don't have a guild or can don't have don't know somebody in a guild, you're going to have to roll around on Newbie Island without any tags. So around level 20, I head back to do some training so I can kill stuff much easier. Right now I have access to my class's nuke, Dread Dissonance, on the Bard. So I go ahead and I train that up until it's really expensive. And my also my base skill and a few other skills that are useful to me at the time. So I grab my snare, I grab my class nuke, I up my Bard song... And then I head back out to the swamp. All right. So um, my goal here is I'm just going to get to level 33. So once I'm level 33, I head over. I just go into the middle of the camp. I have a seat. And let these rats do their best. It's suicide. Okay, so now that I don't have tags anymore and I'm not welcome on Newbie Island, I will be translocating to Sea Dog's Rest when I die. Okay, Sea Dog's Rest is a town that anybody in the game can visit once they hit a certain level. Okay, it's a hub of sorts. It's a place to uh, communicate with other players, maybe trade with other players, and or look for a guild. All right. In Sea Dog's Rest, you will see that you have various merchants and NPCs. So what I do now is I go over to the jewelry fence and I buy myself some decent jewels for my character. I get myself some armor for my character. So basically I grab myself some some intelligence based and mana recovery jewels from the jewelry fence. I sell some of my junk and then I buy some cloth armor as well. Sadly, there's no place to get a basic staff there with any stats on it. So I grab, as you can see, I grab my intelligence gear and I put that on. The gear in STR is pretty decent for your current level. Uh, back in the day, you'd actually have to farm to get that kind of gear off of mobs. It was a lot harder. Now, later on in the game, once you find a guild or you make a guild and you make a city or you join a guild with a city, you're going to be getting your gear from your forges or monster drops. Uh, typically, you're going to get them from the forges in your city instead of drops because the drops are so random it is very rare that you actually find something you're going to use off of a mob okay now that we've leveled up and we're in the real world this is the vault keeper in scd c dogs rest or str the vault keeper is a account wide bank that you can access from any of the characters on an account so you can use that it has a very large storage space to put stuff in and easily transfer it make sure you go to your bank and you put all your gold and your in your loot or whatever you don't want to lose in there okay because people will kill you now when you die, you'll drop what's in your inventory, and people can loot it. Alright, so after that, you're going to go ahead and find yourself a uh, level, you know, 20 plus or 30 plus zone by opening the map and rolling over the different uh, zones in the game. 
as you can see I went to the one north of car here and I found me some blue mobs to kill all right so after 33 like I said you're just gonna look on the map find zones that are your level go there and kill stuff you're probably gonna want to look for some players to play with and if you are looking for more information if you google the Morlock wiki is one of the best sources of information on Shadowbane there is if you anything you want to look up if you want to look up bards just google bard and then Morlock M O R L O C H I will put the link in the description of the video all right so that's how you get to level 33 and beyond in Shadowbane I hope this helped and now I'm going to show you uh, three more basic character setups for people to create that are new to the game. All right, so the next kind of class that we're going to go over here and create is a rogue class. All right, uh, scouts. The scout class is very, very important in Shadowbane. It's the only class that can see other classes that are invisible. So it's a huge plays a huge role. So we're gonna go ahead and make one of those. We're gonna pick Aracoy, which is a which has natural flight. It's a bird race, which is very good for for rogues or anything really, because if something cannot hit you in melee, then that's really good, right? So we're gonna go ahead and take five out of the stats that we don't need at the beginning. All right. So take five out of intelligence, take five out of spirit, take five out of strength. Go ahead and take five out of constitution as well. So we're not gonna be taking any constitution runes for this guy. All right. So race Ericoi, class rogue. Then we're going to go down to traits and we're going to take taught by master thief to boost our max dexterity. We're going to go to lightning reflexes to boost it once again. And then we're going to go with, uh, we're going to go with lucky so I can have a 5% bonus to my defense rating because it's very important that other things it's hard for other characters to hit us. And then we're going to go ahead and grab Fleet of Foot so we're 5% faster. We're scouts, we're fast, we can fly. That's going to help us a lot. Okay? So, top by Master Thief, Lightning Reflexes, Fleet of Foot, and Lucky. All right. And we're probably going to be using a bow, although I don't select it in this little right here but go ahead and select a bow if you're gonna be play a scout now this template works for pretty much any era quite rogue you could use a thief uh, you could make it into uh, various rogue classes all right so that completes that guy might as well throw those two points into dexterity if you want name your guy and we're moving on to the next one all right, so the next thing we're going to go over here is fighter class. We're going to pick a fighter. We're going to go for warrior. What does a warrior do? A warrior hits hard. It wears heavy armor. Okay, so for this one, we're going to go with the Minotaur because it has an, a, a massive amount of strength that it can use. It also has a bonus to polearm, which is the heaviest hitting melee weapon in the game. So we're going to go for a Minotaur Polarm Warrior. All right. There's a few different ways you can build this guy. Uh, I'm taking five out of everything so I can utilize as many starting traits as I, as I can. Okay, I'm going to be using the Polarm. So I'm going to, we're going to move on to the traits here. Now... Although people don't usually go for um, things like precise and that for warriors, I like my warriors to be able to actually hit things because I like to play them other places than just Bane sometimes. 
So as you can see, I take the plus five to polearm skill. I go down to um, the next thing I'm gonna take. I'm pretty sure I take precise as well. I'm looking for the other polearm skill, but I'm pretty sure the Minotaur just has it applied to them as it is. All right, so there's Soldier Born for the plus five polearm. We've got Precise, so I have higher ATR. Polearm skill does have a defense cut, which is good. And we're going to go with, I'm pretty sure, the... Uh, the plus 10 to strength trait, which is hero strength. Okay. And then healthy as an ox for the plus 10 to con. So this guy's going to be able to hit things with a decent amount of defense. Later on, you're going to take the Dark Knight Rune, which will give you a blind. You have a defense cut for higher defense characters, so you have a good amount of health and you hit like a damn truck. Character template that I'm going to go over is going to be a mage. And for this one, we're going to go a little more, a little more advanced. And we're going to go with a glass mage that hits extremely hard. Okay. So we're going to go with elf as the starting race. We're going to go with mage for the starting base class. Okay. And for the traits, we're going to go maximum on the intelligence. All right, we're taking five out of strength, five out of spirit, five out of intelligence, five out of con, and five out of dex. All right. For traits, we're going to take Wizard's Apprentice, Brilliant Mind. We're going to take the Elf Racial intelligence rune as well scion of the caligur caligur okay and then brilliant mind precise i mean precise all right so now i have a maximum intelligence of 150 which is awesome okay later on we're going to take the archmage rune we're gonna blast things, okay? So there we go. I'm pretty sure in that one I went Brilliant Mind, Wizard's Apprentice, Born of the Caligulaire, and Precise, so I have more ATR to hit those pesky defense based characters. Alright? So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to make characters. Like I said, Character creating in Shadowbane is very subjective and opinionated. This is in no means meant to be the ideal characters, but just to give new players an idea of how to do so and give them something to start with. Okay, so we've gone over how to make your interface better. We've gone over how to create characters. We've gone over how to get the game and make an account for the game got a nice leveling guide for people with various information in between like I said if you have any more questions feel free to ask in the comments I check those pretty frequently here on YouTube or hit me up at Anali FTW on Twitter um, remember to hit me remember to like subscribe comment all that stuff and follow me over on twitch.tv and Alas. I stream over there. 
If you've got any questions, feel free to ask me when I'm live. Uh, I'm going to be trying to get a group together for the, the, the wipe that's coming up. There's going to be a brand new server on the 30th of June here with the Aerith map set. It should be pretty damn fun. Uh, here's a little PvP action for you guys with my elf uh, glass uh, dex monkey here. I roll up to a random fight at the mine and I just sweep the floor with these guys. It was pretty damn fun. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I uh, hope you, this video helped you. Um, if it if the video seemed a little slow, I mean it it is for it is for beginners of the game. So you know I wanted to take my time and give as much information as possible. All right. So guys, until next time, peace out, and I hope to see you in Shadowbane.